Hello friends. Welcome to Grow with Afreen. We have prepared band 9 answers for Cambridge IELTS 18, speaking test 3. Remember that all the answers are a little bit longer because they contain more information and ideas. Don't be afraid, listen and develop your imagination. Oh, please subscribe to the channel for more contents. Now listen and learn. Good morning, and welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Christian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. It has three parts. I will give instructions for each of the parts. I am recording this test for marking purposes. All right. This is candidate number 930667, and the time is 11 o'clock. We are doing the exam in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And before we continue, can you please just show me your identification? Here is my passport, which I used to register for the exam, and you can take a look. Great, and what is your full name? My name is Afreen, and my family name is Yisman. You can call me Afreen. Okay, Afreen. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better, and a couple of questions on a general topic. All right. Do you work or study? I actually do both at this moment. I work for a financial institution as a financial strategist. And I also study IELTS and also GRE for my higher studies. How often do you buy things online? Why? Well, online shopping has become increasingly popular over the years due to its convenience and accessibility. I shop once a week from online portals depending upon my needs. Some months I shop twice or thrice a week, other months the numbers can increase up to 10 times. With online shopping, I can browse and purchase products from the comfort of my own home without having to physically go to a store. Additionally, online shopping allows me to compare prices and read reviews from other customers, which can help me make more informed purchasing decisions. What was the last thing you bought online? The last thing I bought online was a barber t-shirt which was a Christmas present. I read a lot of reviews about different brands and finally chose one that I considered the best. To the time, I'm not disappointed with my buy. To be honest, whether it's clothes, electronics, or even groceries, online shopping has revolutionized the way I consume goods and services. Do you ever see things in shops and then buy them online? Why? Why not? Yes, I often see things in shops and then buy them online. There are a few reasons why this happens. One reason is that I may see an item I like in a store but decide to buy it online later because it is more convenient. Online shopping allows me to browse and purchase items from the comfort of my own homes, which can be especially appealing for me who don't enjoy the crowds and noise of physical stores. Another reason is that I can often find better deals or discounts online. This is because online retailers may have lower overhead costs than physical stores, which allows them to offer lower prices to customers. Overall, while I prefer to shop exclusively in physical stores, I enjoy the convenience and savings that online shopping can offer. Do you think the popularity of online shopping is changing your town or city center? Why? Why not? The popularity of online shopping has been on a steady rise for the past few years in my town. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on the way people shop, and it has accelerated the trend of online shopping. Besides, online shopping has become more accessible and user-friendly, with a wider range of products available for purchase online. The ability to compare prices and products easily has also made online shopping more appealing to consumers. Overall, it appears that the popularity of online shopping is not only continuing, but also growing. As technology continues to advance and shopping habits change, online shopping will likely become even more widespread and popular in the future. Okay, Afreen, at this stage of the test, I will give you a card with a topic. You will have to talk about the topic for one to two minutes. Don't worry if I stop you. You have one minute to think about what you are going to say. You can make some notes to help you if you wish. Here is the paper and pencil. Your one minute preparation starts now. Describe a time when you enjoyed visiting a member of your family in their home. You should say, who you visited and where they lived. Why did you make this visit? What happened during this visit? And explain what you enjoyed about this visit. Your one minute preparation is up. Would you start speaking now, please? Visiting a loved one's home can be a great experience, especially when you feel welcomed and comfortable. 
A few years ago, I went to visit my grandparents in their home and I had a wonderful time. I had not seen my grandparents in a while, so I was excited to catch up with them and spend some quality time. When I arrived at my grandparents' house, I was warmly greeted by my grandmother who had prepared my favorite meals for me. The smell of the delicious food filled the house, and I could not wait to dig in. As we sat down to eat, my grandfather joined us and shared stories about my youth, which I had never heard before. I was fascinated and enjoyed listening to my grandfather's tales. After lunch, my grandparents took me on a tour of their garden, pointing out the different plants and flowers that they had grown. They also showed me some old photo albums and shared memories from their past. I felt a deep sense of love and connection with my family and appreciated the time I spent with them. As the day drew to a close, my grandparents gave me a warm hug and thanked me for visiting. I left their home feeling happy and grateful for the opportunity to spend time with my loved ones. Visiting their home had been a memorable experience, filled with love, warmth, and great food. Okay, Afreen, I am going to stop you here. Please turn over the notepaper and put it to the side. I am going to take back the card. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some questions regarding your part two response. All right. When do families celebrate together in your country? In Bangladesh, families celebrate several occasions and festivals together throughout the year. One such occasion is Eid al-Fitr, which marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan. This festival is celebrated with great enthusiasm and involves prayers, feasting, and exchanging gifts with family members and friends. Another important festival celebrated by families in Bangladesh is Eid al-Adha which commemorates the willingness of Prophet Ibrahim to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to God. This festival is also marked by prayer, feasting, and the exchange of gifts. Other occasions when families come together in Bangladesh include weddings, birthdays, and other religious festivals such as Durga Puja, Christmas, and Buddha Purnima. Overall, the people of Bangladesh place great importance on family values and traditions, and celebrating together is an essential part of their culture. How often do all the generations in a family come together in your country? Families in Bangladesh place a strong emphasis on togetherness and often try to gather all generations together on special occasions. However, the frequency of these gatherings varies depending on the family's circumstances. In urban areas, where families may be more fragmented and busy with work or school, it may be more difficult to coordinate regular family gatherings. On the other hand, in rural areas where extended families often live together or nearby, it may be more common to have regular family gatherings. Special occasions such as weddings, religious festivals, and major holidays like Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha are often when families make an extra effort to come together. However, there are also smaller, more informal gatherings that occur throughout the year such as family dinners or outings. Ultimately, the frequency of family gatherings in Bangladesh varies depending on the family's values, living situation, and other circumstances. Why is it that some people might not enjoy attending family occasions? Family occasions are meant to be happy events where loved ones come together to celebrate milestones and enjoy each other's company. But, not everyone enjoys attending them, and there are several reasons why this might be the case. Firstly, family relationships can be complex and difficult to navigate. Not everyone gets along with all of their relatives, and attending family occasions can be stressful if there are underlying tensions or conflicts. Secondly, family occasions can be overwhelming for introverted or socially anxious individuals. Thirdly, family occasions can be emotionally charged. They may bring up memories or feelings that some individuals would rather not confront or deal with. I think that there are many reasons why someone might not enjoy attending family occasions, and it is important to respect their decision if they choose not to attend. It is also important to communicate openly and honestly with family members in order to maintain healthy relationships. Do you think it is a good thing for parents to help their children with schoolwork? Yes, it is generally a good thing for parents to help their children with schoolwork. There are several reasons for this. First, parents can provide their children with additional support and guidance, which can help them to understand and complete their assignments more effectively. Second, parents can act as a sounding board for their children, helping them to clarify their thoughts and ideas. Finally, parents can provide their children with a sense of accountability, encouraging them to stay focused and motivated. On the other hand, it is important for parents to strike a balance when it comes to helping their children with schoolwork.
They should avoid taking over the entire assignment or doing the work for their child, as this can prevent the child from learning and developing important skills. Instead, parents should focus on providing guidance and support while allowing their child to take ownership of the assignment and work through any challenges on their own. By doing so, parents can help their children to become more independent and self-sufficient learners, which will serve them well both in school and in life. How important do you think it is for families to eat together at least once a day? It is an important question. I believe that eating together as a family has numerous benefits that go beyond just sharing a meal. It is an opportunity for family members to connect and bond with each other, strengthening their relationships. Research has shown that families who eat together regularly have better communication, improved mental health, and even better physical health. When families eat together, they are more likely to share stories about their day, discuss important topics, and learn about each other's lives. This helps to build trust and understanding between family members. Additionally, children who eat with their families tend to have better academic performance and are less likely to engage in risky behaviors such as drug use or early sexual activity. Eating together also promotes healthier eating habits. Family meals are more likely to include a variety of foods from different food groups, and parents can model healthy eating behaviors for their children. This can lead to a lifetime of good dietary habits and a reduced risk for obesity and other diet-related diseases. Do you believe that everyone in a family should share household tasks? Well, I think that sharing household tasks among family members is an essential aspect of maintaining a harmonious and functional family life. While it may be tempting to assign tasks based on traditional gender roles or age, it is important to consider the individual abilities and strengths of each family member. When everyone in a family shares household tasks, it promotes a sense of responsibility, accountability, and teamwork. It also helps to prevent burnout and resentment that can arise when one person is left to handle all the household chores. Additionally, sharing household tasks can teach important life skills such as time management, organization, and prioritization. Of course, it is important to recognize that every family is unique and what works for one family may not necessarily work for another. Some families may choose to rotate chores on a weekly basis, while others may assign certain tasks to specific family members based on their strengths and preferences. The key is to find a system that works for your family and encourages everyone to contribute to the household. Thank you. This is the end of your speaking test. Thank you very much. Follow these tips to get a good band in IELTS speaking test. 1. When you talk, you should only look at your notes briefly. Don't read directly from your notes. 2. Don't be afraid to disagree with the opinions the examiner expresses. 3. It is important to have your own opinion to current issues. There is no problem if you provide any false information. 4. If you run out of ideas after one minute, Give yourself a fresh start by looking at the task in the booklet again. 5. It's important to listen carefully to the examiner's questions so that you can answer in the correct tense. 6. When you answer yes, no questions, please answer the questions first and then give reasons for your answer. Don't simply answer yes or no. 7. Make good eye contact with the examiner from the moment you enter the room and answer in a polite and friendly way. Your body language plays an important role in communication. 8. Make sure that you arrive 45 minutes before your test, so that you are not hurrying and have time to relax. If possible, please visit the test center before the day of your test, so that you are familiar with where you need to go. The speaking test is a natural conversation. If you try to give a prepared speech, the examiner will interrupt you and ask you a different question. So try to be natural all the time. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel.